In this video, we will go through the basics of a local Docker build process for a two-tier application. So we have a sample Go application with a frontend and MySQL has a backend. So this is a real world uh, workflow that most of the developers follow. And in this workflow, the first thing to do is basically analyzing the Docker files for both our frontend and the backend application. We will build the Docker images that is locally, then we will run and test these images um, by building Docker containers on top of them. Uh, running the image does not mean that the application is stable and intact. So we will test the application functionality. We will inspect the MySQL database, whether we have the database created, whether we have the records, everything. Then once we make sure all these steps are successful, we will clean up these application containers and then we will tag these with the version numbers and then we will publish these images to a registry. So registry is like a centralized hub where we keep all our Docker images and orchestration tools like OpenShift, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm will pick these images with the deployments and we create the services, ingress, whatever the objects that we define to create. So that's the entire workflow. And the only difference that you will notice between this workflow and the real world workflow is the missing of the security tools. So in a real world workflow, generally organizations will run static code analysis and dynamic analysis on top of the containers just to avoid any vulnerabilities with these Docker images. So without a further ado, Let's get started with the demonstration. In this environment, we already have the Docker client and the server installed. Client will be able to help us run the Docker daemon and server will be able to help us to spin up the containers for our testing process. So first thing is all our code is already available locally. And the first thing that we are going to do is analyze the Docker file for our front-end application. So if we open the Docker file, so we have our base image, which is mentioned in the from command uh, inside the Docker file, and we are copying the code, which is this one here. We are copying the code to the container in this particular directory. Even we are copying the config uh, from the root directory to this one here in the directory of the container. We are exposing this particular application on 8080 and we are running it as 1000, which is the root user. In a real world scenario, it is not at all advisable to run a Docker container as a root. Many of the security tools will flag this as a vulnerability. And the working directory is opt go web app and the entry point is as mentioned here. So this is the first directory that the Docker container will go into in order to execute the container. So this is the entry point for the Docker image. So now, uh, as I said, both the Docker uh, server and the client are installed, which we can check using the Docker version. Uh, with the Docker version, we get both the, uh, the client version as well as the server version. But if you do if you do docker hyphen hyphen version, this is the short form of the version, which will result in only the version of the Docker server. Now, since we already examined uh, the front end web application, so what we're going to do right now is to build this Go web app front end. This is going to be an independent Docker image, and we are going to use a Docker build command to do that. And we are going to pass the variable hyphen T. We are going to name this as Go Web App and the, the version, which is going to be one. And we are going to pass uh, a period here in order to mention that use the Docker file in the particular directory. So since we are in the directory of Go Web App uh, directory, it will be using the Docker file from the directory. So once you do this, uh, it will go through the process of transferring the file 
uh, into a Docker image. It will create the SHA-256 hashes for each and every layer. And finally, it will extract one particular hash for the, um, for the image. So this is going to be your final hash, which actually uh, combines with these all hashes according to the layers that are used in the Docker file. So now we already uh, we have built the Docker image for our front-end uh, application. Now what we're going to do is uh, we are going to inspect the uh, SQL. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, just clear the screen and uh, we will go into the Go Web App directory and we will navigate into the uh, MySQL uh, application. And here we also have a Docker file, which is the MySQL Docker file. So we are going to open this file. So this is nothing. We are using a base image of MySQL 5.6 and we are copying the SQL um, file from here. We are putting it into the Docker uh, entry point with the init db.daemon and we are running it as the root user. It's a simple MySQL uh, image. And um, now what we're going to do is uh, we are going to build uh, the image from the MySQL one. We are already in the MySQL directory. So if you do PWD, you're already in the MySQL directory here. So we will use uh, Docker build hyphen D. We are going to name this as Go uh, Web App um, MySQL. Uh, we will give version one and a period to mention that use the current uh, present working directory in order to find the Docker file which will be used to build the image. So again, same process. According to the layers, it will create the hash hash files, sharp physics and it will create a single hash file which corresponds to all the hashes. So with this step, we have built the two uh, Docker images locally. These are available locally right now. And as we build these images, we are not sure whether we can run these images for functionality testing. So let's quickly uh, start running these images. But in order to build these images, uh, we need to make sure that we have our Docker user defined network. This is basically to, to uh, facilitate a cross container communication so that our front end application can talk to our backend, which is MySQL. So let's first create uh, the user defined network here, which we can do it through Docker network create. And we are going to name this as Go Web App. And that creates the uh, network. Now, the first thing, once we create a network, we, we are able to launch uh, containers in that particular network. Uh, first, let's launch the uh, MySQL because MySQL takes a bit of time longer to start up, depending on um, compared to the front end container. So let's first start uh, running the MySQL uh, container. So the command that we are going to use is docker run. We are going to select hyphen hyphen net, which is the network that we created, which is go web app. We are going to name this deployment or the container as go web app MySQL. This is going to be on the host name, uh, go web app MySQL. It's going to be a detached container. And we are going to pass uh, variables such as uh, MySQL password, the root password, and finally, the image of the container that we are going to run. So when we press, when we execute this, the container will be started uh, in a detached mode, not an interactive mode, so that uh, this container is running in the background. Similarly, um, now we have our MySQL Docker container running. We will similarly run uh, the front end also. So we have our Docker run. We are opening port. 8080 on, on that particular container. Again, this uh, we are defining it to run in a specific uh, user-defined network, which is Go Web App. 
in a detached mode. We are going to name this as Go Web App. Host name uh, will be Go Web App, and followed by the, uh, the Docker image that we created. So now both the containers are up and running um, in the backend. And uh, now it's time for us to test the application locally to make sure that we are able to access the application uh, with that. So one thing we can do is uh, pass in the command. For example, uh, we are doing an echo on the session name of uh, uh, Go Web App Docker, and we are giving the ingress domain. And we can get that uh, this particular is pointing to this particular um, URL. So this is like the uh, account and the login that we can use uh, so that we can log into that one. And this makes sure that the application is running. And uh, we can also uh, do a Docker exec into the command, uh, into the container using the root password that we created, which is going to be my password and uh, log into that. So we are in the MySQL right now. So for example, if I do uh, show databases here, I have uh, the web app, uh, Go web app database that is created. Uh, we can use uh, that particular database, Go web app, and we can do show tables, for example. And we can verify, uh, sorry. Show tables. And we can see uh, the tables in there. So right now we verified that uh, both our containers are running and uh, uh, we make sure that everything is uh, good. So what we're going to do is basically we can clean up these containers. So we can do Docker uh, RM will do a force one. We do Go Web App, which is our front end, and we will also do Go Web App uh, MySQL, which is our back end. So we are removing both the containers which are running on this particular local development environment. So both of them are removed. So now what we can do is basically um, we need to tag these containers and push them to the registry. So we can use Docker tag, for example, uh, go web app. This is the version of the image that we are running locally, version one. And we can use the uh, registry tag here. Uh, we already have uh, registry configured. Underscore post followed by the Go Web App version. So what I'm doing is basically uh, we are tagging the Docker image which is available locally to the registry host and with the particular version that we want in the registry. So once we do this, this is done. So uh, once the images are tagged, we can use a command called Docker push in order to push uh, the uh, image to the registry. So for example, if I do push, post, followed by the go that app hyphen one. So this will be pushed to the registry, which you can see it here. This is the registry where it will be uh, pushed into. So this uh, concludes the demonstration. I hope this video is informative. Uh, if you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. And thank you very much for watching this video. And uh, for more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thank you.